Have you ever wondered how Olympic high jumpers choose the heights of their jumps? This may sound like a silly question, but it's more complicated than it seems. If an athlete's jumps are too low, they unnecessarily waste energy. If their jumps are too high, they may not be able to clear the bar. Now, imagine that instead of missing out on a gold medal, the consequences for choosing the wrong height are that millions of people become ill or even die. This is what the Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, faces each time they decide whether to approve an experimental drug. When approving these drugs, the FDA needs to ensure that they are both safe and effective. To do this, they require statistical evidence from clinical trials, and the height of the bar represents the amount of this evidence that is needed for approval. If they set the bar too low and don't require enough evidence, they risk approving unsafe products that do more harm than good. On the other hand, if they set the bar too high and require too much evidence, then patients with deadly illnesses may suffer from a lack of treatment options. Currently, the FDA requires the same amount of evidence for all diseases, meaning that it is just as difficult to prove drugs for cancer as it is for the common cold. This one-size-fits-all policy ignores important differences in diseases, such as their severity and prevalence, as well as the number of treatment options. So, how do we help the FDA set the bar? Well, in my research, we develop a mathematical model that incorporates these differences. And we use optimization methods to quantify the amount of evidence needed for each disease. We applied our model to two high burden diseases, HIV and hypertension, or high blood pressure. This is what we found. The height of the blue bars is the optimal amount of evidence for these diseases, according to our model. And the height of the red bar is how much is currently required by the FDA. As you can see, the FDA requires too much evidence for both diseases. But for HIV, this is close to optimal. This is because there are currently good treatments available for HIV, which have allowed affected individuals to live almost as long as healthy adults. On the other hand, the FDA makes it far too difficult to approve drugs for hypertension. Hypertension affects over 100 million Americans. And while there are many treatments available, heart disease is still the leading cause of death in this country. So we clearly need more. As you can see, our model has the ability to revolutionize the way that drugs are approved. And it can be applied to any disease. This is why it has gained the attention of the FDA, who's invited us to present our work to them. With our model, they will always win the gold medal for drug approval. Thank you.